This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi, my name is Carson with Top Go Productions, and this is my Zozu the Punisher Commander deck. So this is my Zozu, the Punisher Commander deck. Um, Zozu is my general. Zozu is a 2-2 two, for three that uh, shocks people every time they play a land. And basically this deck is um, designed to be a pressure deck, basically to speed the game up, uh, forces commander, uh, control players to uh, play quicker than they want to, um, and overall just uh, keeps people from playing uh, the game the way they want to, makes the game go by faster and keeps uh, other things from happening. So, my commander, uh, this deck runs 26 mountains. Oh, you just put in the sign right there. And so, uh, from the non base lands, Great Furnace, just a pretty, pretty typical artifact land there. Dark Steel Citadel, it's indestructible. I have some land destruction cards, and so Dark Steel Citadel stays alive during that. Um, Dwarven Ruins, it comes to play tapped, but sometimes I like being able to sack it and get that just extra red mana boost for uh, certain plays. Uh, this is Strip Mine, basically getting rid of lands I don't want uh, on the field. Tectonic Edge, same thing. Wasteland, also getting rid of lands I don't want on the field. Winding Canyons, this is actually proxy, but uh, Winding Canyons allows me to put in my beaters uh, at, at the flash, basically giving them haste. So basically I get to just put them into play, uh, <laughs> swim with them immediately, and that way people don't have an opportunity to remove them. And Hall of the Bantle Lord, same thing, gives them haste. Um, three life is definitely a reasonable price to pay just to be able to have my, my uh, beaters hit the board and start attacking immediately. Is uh, get to encampment. Uh, it just it turns into a beater. Gives me a little bit of extra bit of damage. Um, as you'll see for the rest of the deck, incremental damage is the way this deck wins. Um, slowly but surely, this deck builds up damage and will eventually win. And that's why get to encampments in here. It helps do just that. Malakut the Molten Pinnacle because of all the mountains we play. Malakut is easily act activatable. Um, so uh, get it past five mountains, start uh, lightning bolting things. It's really awesome in mono red decks. Next up we have the Mana Ramp. Soul Ring is obviously awesome. Chromatic Lantern, I realize I play a mono colored deck, but this deck likes to have as many uh, mana rocks as possible because we don't have rampant red. Fire Diamond, for the same reason. The Cold Steel Heart. Thrandine Ammo, a lot of mana ramp really quickly. Coalition Relic, building up the, uh, the charge counters. I can get a lot of mana pretty quickly with that one as well. Gilded Lotus, obviously a lot of mana there. Dark Steel Ingot, I have a few. Uh, Spells in here that destroy a lot of artifacts. Dark Ceiling it survives those. And Koth of the Hammer. He's really in here just for uh, extra mana ramp. His plus one allows me to untap mountains and retap them. His negative two allows me to just really get a lot of red really quickly. Um, of course, his ultimate uh, can win the game. Uh, I usually don't get his ultimate off. People usually see him on the board and kill him immediately because of all the ramp I get from him. Next up, we have the pressure cards. These are the cards that pretty much make the deck run the way I want it to. This is Ankh of Mishra. It does the same thing that Zozu does in artifact form. Uh, having this and Zozu on the field really irritates people. I usually get killed pretty quickly if I do that. Uh, we have Mana Barbs. Mana Barbs is another card that punishes people for tapping their lands. Um, so those big swingy uh, green creatures, uh, Mana Barbs really, really punishes them. Obsidian Fireheart, over time Obsidian Fireheart adds up. Like I said, incremental damage is the way this deck wins games. So Obsidian Fireheart helps with that. Sulfuric Vortex, another card about incremental damage. Also, life gain decks really give red decks a problem. So uh, being able to keep life gain decks from doing their thing is really important. Antagonism, it like when I was saying when I this deck makes people do things they don't want to do. Antagonism doesn't force people to attack, but 
that little bit of incremental damage adds up over time, and eventually they're going to want to attack somebody. Usually me, but at least I'm making them do things they don't want to do. Grand Melee forces people to attack, forces people to block. Wars Toll forces people to tap out. That's one of the best things about this card. If they want to tap one land, they have to tap them all. So they can add all the mana they want to their mana pool and do something with it, but they're only going to be able to do something pretty much uh, once. So they can do something during their main phase, and that's it. They can do something during their combat phase, and that's it. So, in a way, they, have, they really have to pick what phase they want to they want to do. And also, control decks uh, who want to swing with their one creature, they all their utility creatures have to come with them, and so they'll end up using and their utility creatures as well. This card is really, really powerful in this deck. Stranglehold uh, is obvious. It kills tutors. It uh, kills people. It kills people who want to take, you know, take infinite turns. Um, it's just a really powerful red enchantment. Furnace of Wrath really, really ups the game really quickly. All of a sudden, everyone's dealing double damage to each other. All of a sudden, people are dying right away. This speeds up the game uh, substantially as soon as it hits the board. Now, another way this deck uh, keeps people from playing the game they want to play is through keeping their hands uh, in a constant state of flux. And one of the cards you do that with is, with is Burning Inquiry. This you probably want to see this card in any other commander deck, but it really does work in this card in this deck because uh, you know it, it just if someone has a hand, they're building up a hand, they're sculpting that hand. Burning Inquiry ruins that for them. Forge of Soul, same thing happening except we can miracle cost it, so that's pretty awesome. Wheel of Fortune, obviously they're going to be getting rid of their hand, getting a new hand. Another reason this is good is because a lot of the cards in this deck do the same thing. There's a lot of repetition in the deck. So if I have a, a hand with a bunch of stuff that I don't like, maybe a couple cards that I want to keep, but I have Wheel of Fortune, I can still play Wheel of Fortune, get a new grip, and still have some of those cards that I, that I want to play. So Wheel of Fortune is good for me, and it's a lot of times bad for other people. Incendiary Command, the mode I use most is of course the Wheel of Fortune mode, the Wheel of Fortune-esque mode, but uh, being able to shoot something for four and some of the other burn effects on it, I use that plenty as well. Barb Shocker, screwing someone's hand over uh, with Trample and Haste, being able to immediately hit the board and do that, Barb Shocker is awesome. Dragon Mage, obviously screws up over everybody. This guy, as soon as he hits the board, usually gets killed immediately. Um, uh, so if, if he stays around, though, I'm screwing over people's hands all day long. I usually uh, will win the game if I'm able to get Dragon Mage out, suit him up with Lightning Greaves, and go to town, and he's he's fantastic. Finally, Sean drew a Blaze. She's also, I think, a pretty underestimated card. I have tons of uh, reasons to use all of her abilities, but mainly her negative two ability, once again, that will of Fortune ability to screw over people's hands. Um, I think that's one of her best abilities. But, of course, I have all kinds of red spells, all kinds of burn spells that I can play. Chandra Blaze is good all the time. And Memory Jar. Memory Jar doesn't necessarily ruin someone's hand, but it'll ruin the next cards they're going to, to, to draw. There have been plenty of times where I have forced people to draw cards, and, and they can't play those cards, and they are and it just it just kills certain strategies uh, just by activating it. Next up, uh, one of the ways, this deck doesn't play much land destruction, but land destruction is a part of what makes the deck uh, able to put the pressure on. Impending Disaster, um, it's just an enchantment, usually it'll get removed, but it's, it sits there and waits, and it forces people to use uh, enchantment removal right away. If they don't, they're going to lose their lands. And um, I think I rather, I'd rather have it be there for the enchantment removal than for the actual land destruction sometimes, but both work really well. All right, um, Ruination. Uh, a lot of people hate this card. I don't care. <laughs> I like this card a lot. Um, once again, keeps people from getting too greedy with non-basic lands and forces people to play a game that uh, they're not ready to play. Boom Bust. Um, I usually just use Boom, but uh, Bust has been used plenty of times as well. It's a fantastic card, uh, especially if I want to get rid of um, a, a, a partic or particular lands giving me problems, or if I just want to uh, make the game last a little bit longer or shorten the game in my favor. Another way we keep people from uh, playing the game they want to play is by destroying their lands and, uh, I mean, destroying their artifacts, excuse me. 
and one of the ways we do this is shattering spree. Replicating is fantastic. Crash, well, I will play it. I will uh, sack a mountain almost every time for this. Having a free way to uh, destroy someone's artifacts is always good. Generating Pulse is good for obvious reasons. Buyback is amazing. Back in Ruin, destroying two. Unfortunately, it doesn't say up to two, so there has to be two artifacts in the field for me to destroy, but that's okay. I like that. Miyashino Heretic, destroying artifacts and then burning people. Yeah, burning people um, is obviously fantastic. And Vandal Blast. This, I totally underestimated this card when I first saw it. I don't know why. I saw it and I just thought, oh, destroy our artifacts. That's kind of interesting, I guess. That's kind of, but being, overloading this card is so one sided and mean. Um, I, you'll see here in a minute, I have, uh, I, I know, as you saw, I have lots of artifacts, uh, mana rocks, and stuff like that. So, Vandal Blasting uh, and overloading it is just so one sided and so powerful. Um, I love this card. It gets, gets countered almost every time. Except we got some uh, random utility and some other uh, cards that helped the uh, deck run a little smoothly. Vidalcan Ori, uh, like some of my lands earlier, uh, allows me to play creatures in speed, allows them to hit the board right away and get to town. We got Anger, does the same thing, giving them haste. Reverberate, uh, a lot of times reverberates used to screw up old, screw over control decks uh, to keep them from removing something, or maybe if they remove something of mine, I remove something of theirs, that kind of thing. Fork, same exact thing. Like I said, there's a lot of repetition in this deck. Sensei's Divining Top, it helps me uh, smooth out my draws. Crystal Ball, helps me smooth out my draws. Blood Regenitus, keeping those graveyard decks at bay. Swift Foot Boots, Swift foot boots. Uh, gets Dragon Mage going right away, uh, gets a, a lot of my beaters going right away that you're about to see. Lightning Greaves, same thing. Also, protecting Zozu is also uh, a big thing uh, for these cards. Skull Clamp, I run Squeak, Goblin to Bob in this, so Skull Clamp, Squeak, Goblin to Bob are a fantastic draw engine in red. Chaos Warp, it gets rid of everything. It's like the best red removal spell. Uh, sure, they get a permanent, but that's a small price to pay to be able to shuffle in their general or something else that's really powerful. Shredder's Blood, taking control of something, can sometimes help me win the game right then. Wild Guess, because of all the repetition in this deck, um, I don't mind discarding cards to draw cards. So discarding a card that I know I might see another version of later is just fine. Gamble. Uh, it's the only red tutor, real red tutor anyway, uh, other than Godo. But uh, Gamble uh, allows me to search up uh, a combo piece, which I'll tell you about here in a minute. And um, once again, being, losing cards from my hand, not always uh, a bad thing. Faith is looting, same thing as Wild Guess. Discarding cards isn't too bad whenever I'm still able to draw and keep my deck going smoothly. Now we're gonna, next we have the beaters. Here at Voxed Ridge, when combined with just a few other guys, uh, can do a lot of damage, a lot of people don't see him coming. He has haste, so obviously that's another great thing. I think he's kind of underestimated, and in my deck, once again, the incremental damage. I don't need huge beaters to be able to kill someone. Cargan Dragonlord, he grows bigger. I have a lot of mountains. I'm able to get him up to at least level four most of the time. If I get him able to protect him with Lightning Greaves, I get him up to level eight almost all the time. After a Fury, people are playing lands. After a Fury late game comes out really uh, cheap, so I can play something else in that turn. You do fire breathing, it says as flash, I can trick someone into not blocking and uh, pump this, pump, uh, give my guy fire breathing, pump him up real quick, and just win the game right there. Bane fire finishes people. Chandra Noir, she's awesome. She does the incremental damage thing, that plus one, plus one, plus one. Her negative X, I usually use to remove creatures, get them out of the way. And her negative eight uh, can sometimes win the game on its own. All right, and finally I have a goblin package. And this goblin package actually contains within it a combo that wins me the game right away. So, right, first I have Squee Goblin to Bob. And Squee uh, allows me to uh, use Skull Clamp, draw cards, that kind of thing. Triggy Mog, he's 
kind of a funny card because I don't necessarily think he's that good. I just really like him. With Tiki Jiki, I can co con constantly copy Shrinking Mog, make a infinite fog effect so people don't hurt me. It's kind of just cute, but I, I personally really like it. Uh, goblin Recruiter, this is our Goblin Tutor that's going to allow us to get the goblins we need to do our Goblin Combo. So I'm going to keep him right here for right now. Uh, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, he's also a big combo piece. Also, being able to copy um, any of our creatures in the deck, uh, allowing us to attack with creatures that we don't want to lose. We just get a copy of it so we can attack with it later. Uh, that Kiki is great for that. Goblin Ringleader, whenever we get Goblin Recruiter, Recruiter we usually put Goblin Ringleader on the top so that we can immediately draw all the goblins we need for the combo. Skirk Prospector. Skirk Prospector um, allows us to make infinite mana with this combo, which I'll show you here in a minute. Alright, then next up we have Lightning Crafter, and Lightning Crafter has to champion a goblin whenever it enters the battlefield. Um, he taps also to deal three damage to our creature or player, so that's pretty powerful. So what we're going to do is, whenever he enters the battlefield, we're going to champion Kiki Jiki. When with the champion trigger on the stack, we're going to make a copy of Lightning Crafter deck, and then we're going to sack light that copy of Lightning Crafter, the old, the first copy of Lightning Crafter, excuse me, Skirk Prospector. So Kiki Jiki comes back into play untapped, allowing us to then tap him again to make another copy of Skirk of Lightning Crafter, to then sack again to Skirk Prospector, creating a loop, make, giving us infinite red mana, and of course infinite damage, clearing the board, getting killing everybody. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite.